Welcome to the kickoff of Behind the Science Rockstar Edition. I'm your host, Jennifer Fournier. This season, we shine a spotlight on the rock stars behind the science. These scientists may not literally be on stage, but they sure do play a significant backstage role in contributing to our scientific music. Behind me is the very first headquarters of Waters. So much has changed. Just how do we get to where we are today? There is no way I could start off the season without taking a step back to take a look at what I call the classic rock of behind the science. But I consider you one of the original scientific rock stars here at Waters. You've been part of so many innovations that we've had over the years, and I can't wait to have you take us through the history of Waters. Well, I go back to my days as a customer. I bought an LC from Jim Waters in 1972. When I got the phone call, hello, this is Jim Waters from Waters Associates. I thought it was like Henry Ford from Ford Motor <laughs> Company. They almost dropped the phone. But that started my association and joined the company in July of 74 and have been here a long time. So uh, now mostly retired, but uh, happy to talk about all the old stories. Jack Hayes' original manual shows this picture of the schematic of the uh, liquid chromatograph part of the system that actually identifies the gel permeation chromatograph as a liquid chromatography assembly. So this is the first liquid chromatograph. It had all the elements of an LC. It had the pump, the injector, the detector, plus some additional features for gel permeation. And then a few years later, 1967, we introduced the ALC100, the analytical liquid chromatograph. And that really put Waters on the map with all the organic chemists. So Waters is at the very beginning of liquid chromatography. In December of 72, Waters had just introduced the M6000 pump, which you see the original brochure up here on the, on the board. And that pump changed the name of the game because it had non-circular gears. It took some of the, the hurdy-gurdy motion out of the pumping systems that existed at that time and it smoothed out the flow. A lot of you operated 6,000 pounds per square inch, which was four times higher than any system had ever operated at, and changed the whole name of the game. And then in conjunction with that, shortly we did the U6K injector, a universal injection system, which got rid of the old septum that was in the ALC100 and used to spray back fluid onto your lab coat and allowed you to make injections into a flowing stream at 6,000 PSI, and couple that with the invention of the micropore silo microbonda pack 10 micron analytical columns. Those three inventions really changed the name of the game from high pressure LC to high performance LC, and that's the beginning of modern HPLC as we know it today. Well, they say that every good rock star band starts in the basement, and I heard a lot of those pieces are in that basement, so sure let's go let's take, a look. take a look. <laughs> Wow, so this is the basement of waters, the archive, the archive. With all of these <laughs> old instruments. And I couldn't be here with a better person, Pat, who can actually tell us a little bit about this history. We've got a collection of old instruments, not some of the original originals, but a few of the second generation stuff. But this pump here, the M6000 pump, was the, was the classic that really put waters on the map. Why this one's pink, we don't know. I have to tell you, that's my favorite. But, and it's missing a few of the parts. If you look down here, at this, this is a newer generation. It has a manifold on it. But these pumps are unique because they had all the mechanics in one module here with an oil bath in the back, just like in your car, and keep the, uh, the pump gears cool because at 6,000 PSI, you're doing a lot of work. And then over here behind me is the second generation water's gel permeation chromatograph. This instrument dates back to the late 60s. And you can see the original Waters Associates logo up here on the, on, the, on the core, much different than the Batwings, which came in play in 1969 and 1970. So this is middle 60s. Good, a lot of fun looking at this old stuff. Thank you for all this history, That's Pat. Right. I knew you were the right person. <laughs> Thank you for taking a walk down memory lane with me. I now have a true appreciation of the classic rock that is still resonating in the halls of Waters. It has been many years since Jim Waters sold his company, but his name remains over the door, and the company continues to follow his simple formula for success, innovation, a good attitude, and hard work. Check out the link below to download more details on the history of the instrumentation we saw today. And join us next time for another episode of Behind the Science, Rockstar Edition.